So for today, we're going to be looking at the seasonal challenges for week four. If you guys like the content, if you guys like the video, let me know in the comments below. Uh, like, follow, and subscribe really does help the channel grow because a large portion of people that come to my channel are not subscribed. So if you can do me a favor, at least like the video, that would be appreciated. If you guys can share the video, I'd be even more appreciative of that. But either way, let's get into the video. So first and foremost, we're going to be looking at Sorrow Bound 4, complete bond, Bound in Sorrow 4, and defeat Cabal Centurions throughout the system. Uh, this one's not going to be too hard, especially if you combine it with other things. A big thing about these seasonal challenges is that you, you can double dip a lot of these challenges, specifically uh, Crematoria Fist, on the Derelict Leviathan, defeat combatants with melee abilities, solar melee abilities or nightmares defeated with so with melee abilities grant additional progress so obviously you'll be able to double dip the sorrow bound with crematoria fist but also with burning shame complete sever sever shame using only sir complete sever shame using only a solar subclass and solar kinetic or stasis weapons now i don't know if you have to have all of this done or you just have to have like the base of just having the solar subclass and everything else is fine either or you can also double dip this one with precision calibration calibrate marksman weapons scout rifles sniper rifles and linear fusion rifles by landing precision final blows the bonus progress against guardians so for example you can use a scout rifle a sniper rifle and a linear fusion rifle and still be hitting these uh solar kinetic and stasis milestones uh the other thing, by completing Sever Shame, you'll be able to extract weapon elements from Haunted Weapon with Deep Sight mod. So essentially, if you have one of the mods in this season's, uh, uh, the, the thing that Eris has, the, the crown, there we go. Uh, if you have the certain mod where, where when you do one each week, you get a Haunted Weapon that has a, that's a red border, then you'll be able to complete this after you get the deep sight stuff from it. So all of these five right here, you can actually double dip hard. So the only one that you really have to be sure you're hitting is Burning Shame. Uh, make sure you have a solar subclass on so that way you can use your solar melee abilities. You'll be you'll be uh, defeating Centurions along the way, not 50, but it's gonna help towards that goal. And you're gonna be able to complete Bound in Sorrow 4, which you have to complete the Sever Shame in order to do that. And then these two, you'll be able to get from just completing this and this one and this one. This, these two are going to be the ones that are going to take you the longest. Actually, Crematory Fist, Sorrow Bound 4, and Precision Calibration are going to be the ones that are going to stick around. Uh, the next ones are just playlist stuff. So essentially, defeat powerful combatants in Gambit, earn bonus progress for defeating high value of targets. This one's not hard, especially if you are a Gambit player like I am. I just, I just play just because... Uh, the weekly bounties makes me play because best belief if i didn't have to do the weekly bounties then i wouldn't be doing it uh flourish of power defeat guardians in mayhem playlist with super abilities this one is not hard at all you can go for a roaming super which is really good for getting multiple kills just be aware that a lot of people are going to have a lot of panic supers or a lot of one and done supers like specifically uh middle tree arc for warlocks uh blade of barrage for hunters and then middle tree arc for titans they're gonna have a lot of one bangs where they'll take you out of your super so just be aware of that uh make sure you can get supers that can kill multiple people but also will not last long unless you want to try to get more people then go for a roaming super last but not least darkest nightfall completing any nightfall strike on hero difficulty or higher this one's really good because hero difficulty is literally the first one and on some strike or, or in some nightfalls it don't even feel like a nightfall it just feels like a strike most of the time so this is really good considering you get a nightfall weapon i will say if you are going for a specific nightfall weapon make sure you're going for that week's nightfall weapon because if you go for one that like let's say for example you don't want the rocket launcher uh you might just get the rocket launcher if you don't know which week it is so just make sure which weapons dropping and just kind of correlate to towards that because the only negative thing is that you won't be able to do any nightfalls for the for that week or however many week, weeks it is but that, at that point if you're running nightfalls then you really don't need to worry about that but if you don't run an odd nightfalls and you just want to get a guaranteed nightfall weapon this is your best option as for ever she has some pretty cool stuff uh, specifically like two things that i'm actually interested in uh she has a stasis entrance which i already think i already had this because i didn't get this 
which is pretty cool I guess I yeah I mean it, it exists burning mall projection which I'm not even gonna go to it dragon bone this is the first one that I'm actually interested in because it looks really cool but this weapon already has a really cool ornament as well so I'm not sure if I want to like waste the I think it's three thousand no it's a thousand I would I would I would get that for actually let's just get it for a thousand that's pretty good if it was like three thousand I'd have been like no uh, we have the XQ14, which is, I mean, it exists. It's here. If you like it, I man, go ham. And then for the stuff at the bottom, we have Sun Apex Strides. This is the second portion of the Eververse armor. If you guys did not buy it outright and you're just waiting for, for it to be drip fed for, to us, then you can get the boots this week, which is really cool. And I really like a lot of the boots in the game. Even the Warlock's boots was pretty good. Uh, Shining Cabriolet, which looks like a, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah it looks like that. <laughs> Beggar to be fed, which is a really cool ornament for the fusion rifle. It's basically the earth version of it. And it's pretty cool. I'm not the biggest fan of the fusion rifle. I do have a really good one for cleaning up enemies, but at the same time, I mean, I could just use a shotgun for that. We have red line shell, which I'm never a big fan of the shells in this game. Some are really good and some are just really miss, like this one. We have Floating Dance, which, yeah. And then we have Splish Splash, which is also, yeah. And then for the shaders, we have Time Honored, which I'm not the biggest fan personally. It's just not my cup of tea. But if you guys like it or if you guys don't have it, pick it up. I always say this with shaders or pretty much almost everything in the game. Pick it up. You might never know when you might need it because I may not like it. But if it fits a certain look, I will definitely do it because you might never know. It might fit another shader really well and you could use it to complement that other shader. Uh, Wayfarers, guys, I'm also not the biggest fan of this one. I just I'm not a fan of Gaka Green, bro. Really? Uh, hazard pay which actually looks really good with this armor set i really like the like the desaturated red uh on the really saturated blue i really like this combination uh i never really use this uh shader either so i'm actually pretty interested in using it and then sunrise warrior which i love it on principle i just would never wear it because it's too gaudy but i love pink uh, pink is one of my favorite colors and it's it's really cool. It's just, again, it's a little too gaudy. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you guys for coming up to this point. If you guys are, I do notice that a lot of people don't watch my videos in its totality. So if you are here, I'd really do appreciate you. Uh, a few things to note, though, we will begin the review for the for the uh, seasonal armor. I already got it all. Obviously, you guys already should have noticed. I will have the armor sets and the actual uh example set that i made i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh, speak too much on it because i do want all of them to be a surprise aside from the hunters because i think if you have seen the the uh the oh which one is it it's the crown crown wait this one where if you guys saw the worm husk crown video then you guys will know that i wanted to combine that example armor set with the uh with this helmet so that's that one is unchanged but the titan and warlock look really cool in my opinion also we'll be making videos on the caliban's hand and the other two for the warlock and titan the new exotics this season i'll be looking at what builds i'm going to be doing for them and the fashion so it's going to be 50 50 like most mostly it'll be 50 50 but if i'm like calculating calculating in my head it's probably going to be more 20 80 or 20 percent 80 percent which is 20 percent i'm going to be talking about the exotic what builds i'm going for and overall my review of the exotic in gameplay and then the look of it which is i'm going to be explaining the look of it how it shaders uh how how to style it and my example set and then review it as a fashion state so let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you guys want to follow me on my social media it's in the description below i thank you all for coming up to this point because again a lot of people don't come up to here and again if you guys like the video just i would really appreciate it but other than that i'll see you guys later